so if you look at the name of uh, the gov what the government in Iran is called the Islamic Republic, right? Um, for for forty years, a lot of people have pointed out that that how that's a contradiction. Um, you know, so you can't. Is it because uh, for for twelve hundred years there has been uh, an ideological battle between different people with, with different philosophical background um, from the Islamic world uh, debating where you know how could you can't have uh, government by the people because the government the rule law comes from God like. You know, so saying something is Islamic and a republic at the same time is contradictory because you you, you either have to abide by the rules of uh, God or by the rules of people. So this whole um, this is this was a contradiction, um, and the whole concept of a republic is a you know so democracy is an ancient concept goes back to ancient greece but the but the structure of a republic is a modern concept it's a european concept right uh, so we have a lot of uh, monarchists uh, in iran that they when they say is they is when they look at an islamic republic they hate both of those they like we hate both Islam and the fact that it's a republic, right? So they're like, they're they're like, we want everything to be fully Iranian. And if you look at the name Islamic Republic, Islamic is Arab, Republic is European, right? These are all foreign invasions of Iranian culture. Iranian culture means monarchy. I love, right, I love that. I never <laughs> thought of it that way before. So yeah, right. Islamic is Arab and Republic, yeah, is European. And they're yeah, yeah. they're yeah. like we Iran is inherently the land of the Shahs, you know, Shah, you know, and, and of the kings. And this is this we we be kings. We was kings basically, right? That's what they try. Yeah, like, I mean, we need to, wasn't uh, Khomeini like influenced right. a lot by Plato. Like Plato's Republic, like the whole philosopher king thing. I mean, that's that's where the whole idea of the lie the fuck you. Oh, okay, I don't open that. That or, or entire Islamic history is influenced by Hellenistic ideas, especially okay, okay, okay. Neoplatonism and uh, Aristotle. Yeah, I'm not going to open but, that. Yeah, but right okay. Now. So, so here's the thing: a lot of these uh, monarchists who are now supporting uh, is the IRGC. Um, one thing that they say now is like. This is good because they want like an they want an authoritarian regime, right? They don't want democracy. They want author they want a king, right? And they're like, you know what IRGC is doing is IRGC is now removing the republic part. Like they, they don't want to have a presidency. Like, you know what? We're gonna take over the presidency now with Said Muhammad and basically completely make it, you know, and if if we wish it wasn't there, but now that it's there, let's take over, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. So they're like if the IRGC managed to take over the presidency, we managed to get rid of the republic part of the Islamic Republic. We could worry about the Islamic part later. Right now, yeah. <laughs> right now let's focus on the like, republic part of it. And and they're like, look, there's another thing that they like is like, if Mushtaba Khamenei becomes the next supreme leader, the suggestion that the supreme leader position is mo looking more and more like a, a king, rather than a religious leader is it would basically be like look we're right we were right all these years that we were telling that Khamenei is playing the role of a king more of a religious leader if he managed to get his son in power it proves that we were right all these years so they're like we're becoming more and more and they also keep bragging about how islamic republic is the map of its influence in lebanon syria yemen right now iraq um and um it looks like the Sassanid Empire, right? They're like, look, we're bringing back the pre-Islamic Sassanid Empire. So they, this is the reasons why some of these people like that again, right? So that's an, one yeah. thing I want. To, yeah, right? go ahead. And, the second thing. And this is a growing movement that a lot of people shouldn't be ignoring. Um, another thing I want to mention is that the IRGC seems to be again. This is a guess. Don't take my words for it. But some people are suggesting that. You see, every time the U.S. and Ira uh, and Zarif suggest that they're going to be talking about the nuclear situation, right? The nuclear deal. It seems like the IRGC keeps poking, um, so that the deal, no communication happens 
under this administration. They're waiting. They're like, wait until we are in power. Nobody talks to this administration. You are, we are the people you deal with, right? So they want to give the United States excuses to say, we're not going to talk with you because look what you're doing, right? So why would we talk to Iran's government when they are, look, they attacked here, they attacked there, right? So they want to give the United States government excuses to continue stalemate not talking to Iran over nuclear weapons by making sure they poke every time something happens, right? So it, they, 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 they want to tell also Rouhani and Zarif to just shut up. You guys are already lost. You guys are already like insignificant. This idea of trying to get a deal through before your term is over, that's your, we're not going to let that happen. So that's, that's another thing, right? Uh, one other element that you to take into account uh, is that some people are wondering if the next president uh, is part of IRGC, how is that going to look for international relationships? Because, um, you know, it's one thing to be a state sponsor of terror, okay? Do, here's the thing. A lot of people don't understand the significance between being a terrorist organization or just being a government that is a state sponsor of terror, right? If you are a terrorist organization, you are you become untouchable by many, many people, right? Even within Iran, right? Because if, if somebody deals with somebody that dealt with a terrorist organization, they become like, people are like, oh my God, I don't want my finances to be, like, because then people are not going to deal with you. Like, you're going to be marked by United States. And if you're marked by FATF or any other uh, terrorist watch group out there, then working with you becomes very toxic because every you become you know you're being watched right now you know what I mean so 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 it's funny because some people who like who get who you know, like United States put a sanction on as a terrorist people are like why would I care I'm not dealing with the United States well you don't understand you can't deal with other people also that are dealing with people that are dealing with the United States. So even some people that you deal with, like it's multiple degrees of separation. Like it's hard that like you do, you are going to suffer financially, even if you're not, don't have any direct relationship with the United States. Right. It's a very tight, like being considered a terrorist organization. It, United States still has a lot of economic power around the world for that to become a devastating, like it's like it's suffocating. United States, like financially suffocating for you to be labeled as a terrorist organization by United States, right? Yeah. Um, it's less suffocating for you to be a state sponsor of terror. Okay, you cannot. United States never goes, hasn't so far until recently, hasn't gone and made an entire government to be considered a terrorist organization, right? Because it would be too much for United States, like it, it would it would alienate alienate United States. Because imagine if United States says that you can't deal with people who deal with this government, like for multiple degrees, like people are like, okay, we're gonna start ignoring United States more now, right? So it's one thing for United States to say this organization, like let's say ISIS or Al-Qaeda, or I don't know, Hezbollah is a terrorist group, uh, but not, not United States will mark a government as a sponsor of terror, but not a terrorist organization itself, right? Recently, however, Pompeo did that with the Houthis who weren't officially uh, the government in Yemen. However, they were technically the government, and that was a very bad move because that would stop the peace negotiations and also all the humanitarian uh, groups that wanted to deal in Yemen because the Houthis were official, not officially the government, but technically the government. Um, it made it so harder for so many groups, humanitarian groups, to be able to get aid to Yemen. So it's a good thing that the Biden administration undid that, even though the Houthis are garbage organization and they're horrible and they're terrorist group. It technically doesn't make sense to lab label a government as a, uh, as a terrorist organization. Now, coming back to Iran, uh, Iran is considered a space sponsor of terror. However, the IRGC is considered a terrorist group. So what happens when it comes to international relationships with Iran? Wait, the IRGC the is or is not? Is a yeah. terrorist group. So what happens if the IRGC, who's labeled, who's labeled as a terrorist group, now becomes part of the presidency? How is that going to affect international relationships with Iran? I don't know. 
They, well, but it's something to consider. They'll deal with them like they dealt with yeah. the. They were prepared to deal with the Muslim Brotherhood. I mean, that's how, that's how it happens. Like Muslim said, Brotherhood is not officially not right. officially, but even if it was right, I mean, the thing is that there are governments. It would have like to be removed. You, yeah, you deal with it. And so I anyway, I we're we're out of time right now. This is really right, right. really fascinating. I'm really curious about, and maybe we'll revisit this a few times before mm. um, yes. the election. The election is in June. Uh, so I'm I'm really interested. I mean, you talk about the presidency a lot uh, here, and which is totally fascinating. But I I kind of think like you know, the presidency in Iran, sure it's something, but it doesn't really mean as much. I think the really interesting dynamic here is the circumcision of the role of the supreme leader, right? Which, fine, it may have already happened, and it may be like that, and maybe the status quo. But the fact that it's really coming out in the open, it's so obvious now. Um, is I, th I think that's a part of it that's really interesting and transformative to me as a non-Iranian outsider. But hey guys, if you want to join these streams live, get your comments and questions read by Ali and Armin and the guests, and most importantly, to get full access to the full video versions of all these episodes, become a patron. Link in the description below.